Good evening, Rambler fans, and welcome to this week's episode of the Rambler Sports Locker. I'm Molly Brewer. And I'm Jake Mazanke. I'm surprised you're sitting here right now because your Ohio State Buckeyes are playing March Madness. You know, win or lose, they have a great history with basketball. Thank you very much. The Buckeyes sure couldn't hold off the Ramblers last week in volleyball. Speaking of volleyball, Loyola Men's Volleyball, ranked second in the nation, beat Grand Canyon in the first of two game series on Wednesday. This follows their first loss after a 40-game winning streak earlier this month. The Ramblers won three of five games by scores of 25-19, 25-19, and 25-18. Thomas Jeske led the team with a match high of 12 kills, while Jeff Jendrick struck with nine kills and five blocks. Tune in tonight at 7 p.m. to watch the Ramblers take on the Lopes for a second time in Gentile Arena. The Ramblers hosted Ryder last Monday in their first round of the CBI tournament. This was their first postseason game since the 1985 season. The Ramblers opened up the first half with a lead thanks to an alley-oop and one-handed dunk by Dante Ingram. Milton Doyle then fed Earl Peterson on the, on the very next possession for a two-handed slam. Ryder Xavier Lundy immediately answered on the other end with one of his game-high five three-pointers. The Ramblers and Bronx traded baskets for most of the half, but Teddy Okafor led a 6-0 rider run to close it out, including a three with a hand in his face. This gave the Bronx a 36-31 halftime lead. Ryder continued its strong play in the second half as the Bronx extended their lead to eight, led by, Le by Xavier Lundy again with his team-high 19 points. Milton Doyle scored 20 of his game-high 22 points in the second half as he led a Rambler com comeback and cut the deficit to two by getting to the glass off this smooth layup. A few possessions later, it's Doyle again as he uses the spin move to get some space and nails a floater, giving the Ramblers a 56-54 lead. The Ramblers never relinqu relinquished that lead and took the game with a final score of 62-59. Loyola will move to face Oral Roberts in the next round of the CBI this Monday at Gentile Arena. But first, our own Isra El Hawali went to Loyola's Water Tower campus to get people's reactions to the Ramblers' first ap playoff appearance in 30 years. The Loyola men's basketball team has been playing exceptionally well this season. And even though they didn't win Arch Madness, they earned their way to a postseason game for the first time in 30 years. We're out here asking Ramblers what they think about this exciting news. Hearing that we are making such great strides with our basketball team and our volleyball team and, every, and all of our other teams uh, makes it an even more exciting environment to be in. I was actually at the uh, Riders game this past Tuesday. Um, is, uh, in my opinion, it's definitely a big deal to make the postseason after a uh, season long of hard work. So definitely congrats to them. I think it's awesome. Um, I originally went to the University of Illinois. I was a huge fan of basketball there. Um, I'm a huge basketball fan in general. Um, so I'd be very interested to go see the uh, Ramblers play. I feel like this is a really exciting um, event for them and that there should be support and I would love to be there and help, especially as a freshman. It's nice going and seeing a huge school, like all of us coming together and supporting one another. Seems like the Ramblers are very proud of the basketball team's performance and are looking forward to supporting them at their game Monday night. Israel Halwani, Loyola New Chicago. Thanks, Isra. The more Rambler fans, the better, right, Jake? Ain't that the truth. The Loyola softball team defeated Evansville in the first of two games by a score of 10 to 1. Loyola's powerful offense was led by Katie Latrevita, who batted a 3 for 4 with two RBIs. Jacqueline Murphy, Brooke Widerski, and Jamie O'Brien also each scored two RBIs. The game was held at nothing until a score by Jessica Balzano in the third inning. In the following game of Sunday's doubleheader, Evansville beat Loyola 3-2. Jessica Balzano batted 3-for-3 three three and stole three bases, while Brooke Widerski and Taryn Schaefer both scored for the Ramblers. It was the first Valley loss of their season. This month is a memorable month for basketball. In honor of March Madness, more like craziness, here's Isra Helawani with This Week in History. This particular week in history, one of the larger view tournaments, March Madness, was born. The NCAA men's basketball tournament that has been going on for 75 years now first began on March 17, 1939. The tournament ended on March 27th on Northwestern University's campus in Evanston. The University of Oregon, coached by Howard Hobson, took home the national title with a 46-33 victory against Ohio State University. For the first 12 years of the tournament, only eight teams were invited to participate. They played in single elimination to determine the NCAA Men's Championship. 
By 2005, college basketball had become the most popular sporting event after the Super Bowl. By 2011, the tournament has grown to host 68 teams. It has also become known as the Final Four because the tournament is divided into four regions with 16 teams playing in each. The winning four teams comprise the Final Four, who meet to decide the championship. This week commemorates the first Final Four ever, Oregon, Ohio State, Oklahoma, and Villanova. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Isra. It's surprising that the NCAA didn't have an organized tournament any sooner for, big, for hoops. It's a big part of American culture, or my culture at least. Don't you think, Molly? I'd have to say that that's definitely a big part of your culture. There is a true act of sportsmanship displayed by the Wichita State cheer team at last week's MVC Women's Basketball Tournament. We'll take it up to Blake Keller to tell us more about this exciting collaboration. It was Friday that the Loyola's women's basketball team traveled to St. Charles to face the Wichita State Shockers in the Missouri Valley Conference. Due to conflicts with schedules and midterms, Loyola only had one available cheerleader that could support the Ramblers at the game. Sophomore cheerleader and Rambler Sports Locker's own Maddie Kenny traveled to the game alone and was shocked when the Wichita State Shockers cheer team asked her to join them. I knew Wichita State, they have a really good cheer team and they have a good program. And so when they came up to me and they were like, let's play, and I was like, what do you mean, like, let's play? And they're like, no, come on, let's stunt. And I was really taken back at it. I totally thought they were joking. And then the next thing I know, uh, we were stunting. We were doing new stunts that I've never done before. And I was flying for the first time since high school. And then I was doing timeouts with them. And it was really, it was really fun. It was really awesome. The Shockers cheer team to welcome Maddie, who usually stays grounded to the floor during her cheers. It was absolutely a blast. They're all super nice, super fun. Um, I was really nervous, but when you have guys underneath you, you just trust them 100% because they're not going to let you hit the, hit the floor. The flip stunt where I tumbled out of, I've never done that before. I am mostly like a ground body. I lift people in the air. I don't stand on people's hands. And so that was a total different thing that I haven't done in four years. Maddie believes that both Wichita State and Loyola has received a lot of positive feedback from the experience. And the experience has given Maddie a new nickname, thanks to her fellow teammates. My team thinks it's hilarious. I have a new nickname called the Lone Cheerleader. So whenever I'm doing awkward stuff, now I'm just the Lone Cheerleader. If you Google Lone Cheerleader, my face pops up. I'm not even joking. What came most shocking to Maddie? The overwhelming support from the Wichita State crowd. Even though she was a shocker for one night, Maddie will always be a Rambler. Go Ramblers! <laughs> for Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Blake Keller. Congratulations to Maddie and the Wichita State cheer team on some successful teamwork. We look forward to seeing more. Sam Penzenstadler was the only Rambler to represent Loyola at the NCAA Indoor National Track and Field Meet this past weekend. Pensenstadler ran a time of 4 minutes 11 seconds in the preliminary round of the men's mile and was unable to advance to finals. He placed 16th overall in the race and was award awarded second team All-American honors. This marks the third consecutive national track and field meet that Pensenstadler has earned All-American status. The men's golf team closed out the three-day Pinehurst Intercollegiate Tournament by placing 11th with a team score of 975. Freshman Garrett Buckley held the lowest individual score for the Ramblers at 241 after carding a 76 on the final day. Next week, the team travels to Williamsburg, Virginia for the Middleburg Bank Intercollegiate Tournament. Women's basketball ended their season Saturday after being defeated by Wichita State in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament quarterfinals. Despite beating Bradley 67-55 on Friday, the team struggled to overcome Wichita's 13-point halftime lead. The Missouri Valley Newcomer of the Year, Taylor Manuel, led the team with 8 points, 12 rebounds, and 3 blocks against the Shockers. March Madness is back, and that means we'll be taking some Bracketology for the Ramble. Wait, I thought they were doing more hockey this time. Why? I'm not sure. Hmm. hmm. Hey y'all, and welcome to this week's Weekly Ramble. I'm your host, Milop Mehta, and I'm joined by our two contestants, our defending champ, Maria Shutkowski, and the challenger, Nader Issa. Now, it is March, and therefore March Madness probably should be the subject of our ramble, but I was going to have Nader wear a Cinderella dress to pick his favorite Cinderella, and apparently that's not appropriate for some reason, so 
Yeah, we're, we're going to be talking about a useless sport, hockey. And, I mean, the question is, you know, which of our current division leaders is most likely to fall first in the playoffs, but it's going to probably end up about, like, the Blackhawks and D Detroit team. Pist no, not the Pistons. It doesn't matter. Just bring it. Go. <laughs> Ooh, well, you sure know how to push a girl's buttons over there, Mila. But, um, Tell me about it. <laughs> first of all, hockey, best sport around, you know, without question. I think we're both in agreement there. What team is going to probably get out first that's currently ranked number one? I'm going to have to go with the St. Louis Blues. Um, they're currently number one in the Western Conference. And I do not think that they are going to make it very far. Um, Historically, they don't go very far. They've never won a Stanley Cup, ever. And uh, their division is a lot harder than the Eastern Conference, and their competition's too tough. Um, right now, their record is, although better than the, leader division, the other leading divi divisions, it, I, they're not going to go far. So. I mean, I hate the Cardinals, and they're from St. Louis. But I feel kind of bad picking on a team whose name is the Blues. I mean, they kind of <laughs> already... The they dump. do have uh, T.J. Oshie, who basically, you know, won us pretty far, got us pretty far in the Olympics last year. So. Yeah, yeah, him too. Oshie for president. That guy. Uh, Nader. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Montreal Canadiens from the Eastern Conference. Um, obviously, you might not know this, Mila, because you're not a hockey fan, but there hasn't been a Canadian team that's gone far in the playoffs or won the Stanley Cup in, I don't know, 20 years. So I don't think Montreal has that good of a chance to, to win it all much less move ahead, because they're going to be playing, the way that the standings are right now, they're either going to be playing um, Boston, Detroit, or Washington. All three of those teams are, are playoff teams. All three of those teams are, have a history of winning in the playoffs and going far. Boston's the only team other than Chicago to win two cups since the last lockout, the second to last lockout and back in 2005. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that Montreal is going to be able to, to get past all of those teams much less one in the first round. Yeah, and they're Canadian. This is the National Hockey League, so we should not have Canadian teams in our National Hockey League. I just think that's not <laughs> national. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, yeah, yeah. Maria, so. Well, uh, uh, hockey was invented in Canada, basically. Exactly, that's why and it's besides, irrelevant. Yeah, but besides... Your question, <laughs> which I have to think of right now, so you pick the Blues, right? Yes. Well, if, like Nader said, you know, his team that he's picking is facing a lot of playoff teams that yeah. have done well, are the Blues doing the same thing? Yeah, they are. I mean, they're going to face, you know, the coveted Chicago Blackhawks, and everyone here, you know, bows down to them, basically, and all that good stuff. So you got, you know, you have the Blackhawks, you have Minnesota Wild, you have uh, Winnipeg Jets, Colorado, and Dallas. The Nashville Predators are coming out of nowhere. All right. And, uh, Solid teams, solid teams. Yeah. And Nader, the Canadians, you know, they don't have to face the Blackhawks, and the Blackhawks are from Chicago, so doesn't that make the Canadians a lesser choice? Well, we're talking about the first round. Who's going to exit in the first round? The, the Canadians are going to uh, play one of those three teams I talked about that are historically really good. St. Louis is either going to play Minnesota or Calgary in the first round. When's the last time that either, either of those teams made it far in the playoffs at all? I can't remember, and I've been watching hockey for a while. Neither of those yeah. teams is a good team, so I don't think they have any chance of losing in the first true, round. True, true. Maria, go ahead, start your butt. Yeah, go him. for it. Same, but, however, <laughs> nonetheless, Montreal also has not done very well at all recently, um, and the Calgary Flames are doing surprisingly well for any division. Most Blackhawk fans are worried about Calgary playing them in the playoffs. I'm not. Either way. Well, yeah, you don't really yeah. know that much. So. <laughs> Nader, you're a butt. Um, Montreal has actually done pretty well recently. They've made it to the second round. I, I don't know the exact number, but I, I think at least three times in the past five years, I think that's correct. Um, and they've historically been able to compete with teams like Boston and Detroit in the playoffs that are really good teams. Yeah. Right, so they would be competing, therefore they wouldn't lose first. Yeah, um, so how do you even decide this, this hockey thing? I. I, yeah, um, I'm going to give it to Nader because his first point sounded really, really good. I don't know if it's true or not, but he also mentioned Calgary. And I this isn't really my phone. Hey, what's up, Joaquin? You kind of know that we're in a show right now, right? Okay, that, that Cinderella joke was... 
Yes. No. What's going on? What? It's. <laughs> well, guys, I guess if you insult hockey, which I did, you're just going to have other hockey enthusiasts mess it up. So I'm not going to be on the show next week, apparently, because I have to go through sensitivity training. Um, I don't even know who's going to be back, but yeah. All Happy. right. Th thanks. Thanks. Hockey. Back, just, just go back to the desk. So apparently Milop gets kicked off for talking about hockey. Yeah, we should probably stick to talking about, you know, good sports. I understand that this year's NFL free agent period has been crazier than the typical season, but as you're about to see, it is leaving some fans particularly upset. It's just not smart of them to let Jim Graham over there. Why is that? He's a really good, he's a really good player and he's a really good player and I like him and I went into saying the Saints and What would you tell Jimmy Graham right now if you could? Then you shouldn't go to Seattle. <laughs> oh, I was so sad watching that little girl cry over her favorite NFL player. It's going to be almost as entertaining as watching you cry when the Buckeyes lose later today. I don't know about that. <laughs> Make sure to visit our website at ramblersportslocker.com and you can check us out on Twitter and Facebook at any of the handles you see listed below. I'm Molly Brewer. And I'm Jake Mazanke. Thanks for stopping by the locker and don't forget to turn out the lights.